like I say, when, when I spoke to the Altrincham manager, um, Phil Parkinson, you know, having played against Altrincham twice for York, at York, the football that they played was, for that, for that level, was frightening. You know, I've never, ever seen a, a team at that level in the in the National League North keep the ball like Hawkingham did. And, um, you know, that suited my style of play and suited my game, you know, perfectly. Um, and, and, and as you say, it showed with the with the, um, the performances that I put in on a, on a personal basis. But not only that, you know, I was there for seven games. You know, we had a, a four month window where we were where we did nothing. And, um, you know, we still ended up getting promoted. And, you know, from the minute I went in, you know, I joined, I knew I was joining a club that had the potential to get promoted. Um, and, and, and like I say, I think I was probably, I think it worked perfect for both parties. You know, I think I was the missing piece to their jigsaw, uh, jigsaw puzzle. And, and, you know, I think the club were, were great with me. Um, in terms of the football that they played was, was, was just perfect. And, um, you know, I felt at home straight away. And, and, and like I say, we we got over the line in the in the playoff final, which wasn't a wasn't any a spectacle by any stretch. But uh, you know, those games are always tight. So yeah, uh, well, speaking of playoffs, the playoffs were a bit sort of different from normal from what most people might be familiar with. So just to sort of explain, it was a sixteen playoff, and the sort of top two of the playoffs uh, get sort of a bye to the semi finals, if you like, and the bottom four yeah. of the playoffs. Go through just explaining that, just because they might think, well, why is the three games? Um, we're not too familiar with sort of national league. Um, so then the first game in those playoffs will be against former team Chester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you say, it's a little bit different format um, in in the national league in terms of the six teams. Two teams get go into a semi final straight away, and then you have two knockouts, uh, two knockout fixtures, and um, of course. You know, it was typical that it was going to be. It was typical I was going to, uh, I was going to play against one of my former clubs, and um, ended up being two of them. But yeah, the first one was Chester at home, and again, very strange because of the the environment that we were in, and you know the pandemic that we'd just been through. So it was very subdued, a very different, um, a very different game, if you like, and you know the atmosphere just wasn't wasn't the same as a normal game but I think that sort of suited us you know because as I alluded on before with with Chester being a big club and not that Ultram aren't a big club but you know Chester Chester have a big big home following you know they take they take they would have taken a fair few thousand away in a playoff game as well mm. um, and I think they would have relied on the crowd a little bit more than we would you know it didn't matter whether whether our Altrincham team played in front of ten men or you know ten thousand people. They they proved that in uh, their FA Cup run. You know they went away just before I joined and and played Portsmouth at Fratton Park. And by all accounts, I'm um, I'm told they they should have won that game. You know they lost to a last minute penalty. So you know it was uh, it was a case of of us just sort of it being like a training game if you like really. Um, the atmosphere wasn't wasn't going to make any difference to us. And then, yeah, we went three nil up. Adam, uh, they had a man sent off, and they ended up being better, better with ten men than they were with eleven. Um, and it finished three two, so it it looks like it was a close one. And you know they they had quite a bit of possession in the last sort of ten minutes, but um, you know in the end it was it was quite comfortable. Yeah, I remember a mate of mine is a Chester fan, so I was, and I'll be honest, you know, I might annoy some uh, some fans, but I was I was rooting for Chester. And I think if I remember, I think went three 0 up. If I remember, and then it sort of came back and it was sending off or what what have you. And it's very close in the end, and then my mate being gutted. Um, and then another former team, like you said, York, uh, yeah, two 0 Get the same sort of thing for them. So obviously not no fans there, and yeah, same again. You know, big club. Have a, that I imagine there'd have probably been more than five thousand at, at Booth and Crescent. It was potentially the last game that they were going to play there as well because they've got a new stadium. So <clears throat> that would have been packed to the rafters. You know, it'd have been it would have been full of fans. It'd have been completely different atmosphere, very hostile for 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 um, for us as the away team. But you know, the fact that Ultram went there twice in the in, in that season already and had won both games big cup and once in the FA trophy. I think 
Um, I think York were beaten that day psychologically. Um, you know, I, I just think sort of all the all the aspects were against them. The fact that they'd lost twice to Altrincham, um, there was no fans, you know, so they weren't going to be able to sort of rely on on any fans to get behind them and you know make it as hostile as possible for the away team. It it, it just sort of felt that that game was won before we you know we'd even kicked the ball, mm. um, you know, and obviously that might sound. Um, that might sound wrong to say, but you know that I don't mean that in any in any disrespectful way at all. But but you know, um, just just it just seeing that everything was against them. You know, they they obviously felt quite hard done by that they they hadn't been promoted automatically mm. as well because mm. of the points per game, the way that you know it was, the way the season was concluded. Um, and and like I say, you know, we were, we were always confident of, of of that game, and you know, we we were quietly confident that if we beat Chester. You know, we we we'd go on to we'd go on to to get promoted, and you know, like I said, it turned out that we did do that. But uh, the final was obviously a little bit little bit of a of a stalemate. And like I said, but it's another team, not a farmer team, but another team who are moving grounds. I think um, Boston one 0 like I said, close game, stalemate. Um, how did that sounds closer than the other ones? So a bit bit more nerve wracking yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, sort of different, really, Boston. The, the game was, we were sort of going into that. Um, I think Boston had beaten Altrincham five nil in in the league fixture at um, at the look of, uh, at sorry at Boston Stadium. Um, so we sort of, although we knew that we were capable of obviously winning that game, we sort of felt that we had a point to prove because obviously they'd gone there earlier in the season and and and, and got pumped five nil. So there was a little bit of. Um, you know, nerves if you like, but it was it was a it was a game. They're very, you know, very sort of physical, very in your face, very up for it. You know, they put themselves about. They're a mobile, they're a mobile team, and then you know they sort of stopped our our game plan if you like, and we weren't really able to implement our style of play on the game. Um, but it was one of those games where I knew that if we didn't concede first, we would win the game. Um, and I remember speaking to the captain, Malty, and, you know, we said at the end of the game, we both said, you know, it was almost in sync. We both said we felt as long as we didn't concede first, we, we would win the game. And, and um, you know, thankfully, Mooney, Mooney followed in one of my one of my not very good passes and uh, the keeper fumbled it. And, um, and yeah, that was the, the decisive goal. Mm. And then got promoted. You would have obviously loved to have had fans there and stuff like that, but not not to be... So, what you saying out of you would have had sort of promotions before, sort of Maxfield? How, how do those rank then? Would you say Maxfield promotion? How would you say? Yeah, a hundred percent. That's obviously the you know the best the best promotion that I've had, um, without a doubt. Altrincham was is is definitely the the, the next best promotion I've had. Um, I've won promotion with Hensford from the Evo Stick to the National League North. Um, that was, you know, I was involved there for the full season. But I think I have to obviously look at the Altrincham game and uh, the Altrincham promotion and the fact that I played such a big part in such a small space of time. Mm. Um, you know, that was obviously great. You know, it was typical that the the uh, the goal scoring run that I was on stopped at, at York, um, which was always going to happen. You know, we we knew that. But um, but like I say, you know, the the promotions that I've had, they've um, they're all special to me in, in in different ways, but but definitely you know obviously the Macclesfield one being being massive underdogs and you know winning winning it by such a, a big margin with some some big clubs in the league that season was uh, was very special. Um, a little bit of just having a sort of look the situation sort sort of they're in at the the time or the seasons before that is they were they were national league they got a double relegation got back up. Had a season, sort of staying there, and then got promoted with you. So, is that what you're aware of? Because that's sort of a to we see a lot of teams get promoted, uh, relegated, then promoted. To for a team, and I've, we've seen it happen with like Chesterfield and you know York, where they have a double relegation, and it can take them quite a few years to get back. But that it seems to be an issue with Ultra Good because they did two promotions in three years off the back of a double relegation. Yeah, I think 
you know, I think what what's different is the um, the the fundamentals at the club are, are, are slightly different there. You know, they've they've they obviously identified a manager that they they saw a lot of potential in, and you know they've stuck with him. Um, you know, his style of play is like I said, it's probably the best football inside that I've played in in terms of the way that we we played at Altrincham. Um, and and like I said, it's it's the football that we play is is it was different because sometimes when you're playing a football inside, if it's not going for you as a team when you play football, you resort to to sort of going more direct. But we didn't, you know, we stuck to it, and he encouraged that from from the first whistle to the you know to the last whistle. Um, and I think that's probably the reason why you know why the the promotions came so soon after the relegations in 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 the respect that you know he he knew the way he wanted to play he built a squad that has now been together this is probably the fourth season a lot of those players have played with each other so you know not only are they a, a are they a close knit team on the pitch but they're they're also a you know a real close friendship group off the mm. pitch and i think that um you know that that's ultimately helps was that you said to so you and that's a good point sort of about how close they are three or four seasons. Is that something you're aware of then as you're coming in as sort of the new guy, not for too long, you're only there for a few months. Does that sort of worry you sort of that you that you're sort of odd went out almost? If you like um, it, it's, knowing knowing that now, I mean I'd obviously I didn't really it all happened so quick going to Auckland, to be honest. So I didn't really know a lot about the you know, the squad or anything like that in terms of how long they've been together. But um obviously then playing you know playing in that squad you realize how you know how much of a close knit team they are and and how much of a a close friendship group they've got you know a lot of them socialize outside of football more than they do inside of football you know and we we used to train twice a week sometimes three times a week so it was um it's definitely it's definitely important and um and and like i say it's it's something that i believe will will stand them in good stead this season <laughs>